Hey y'all, it's Caitlin, and this is going to be uh, my last video for Pride Month, um, and I wanted to get something out there for Pride. Um, so this is going to be a top, five, technically top six, top, <laughs> top six um, Pride Pops in my collection. Um, but before I get to that, let me just say, you know, Pride is something. It it's it's like you know. Black History Month, or Mental Health Awareness Month, or even uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's not something that's limited to a month. <laughs> yes, that's the time when people usually take the time out to acknowledge and recognize it. But these are things that can be seen and acknowledged and should be seen and acknowledged all year round uh, and celebrated. And it's just, even even though it's, it's really awesome that we do have a month dedicated for it, um, it's something that we do need to keep in mind all year round because uh, especially uh, in the LGBTQ plus community, it, it is a struggle, uh, especially for people who are not out. I'm still not fully out, um, not because of me, but because, <laughs> because of my family. There are certain members of my family that don't uh, want me to tell <laughs> other people in the family to kind of save face or whatever. Um, and I've respected that. Most of them are old, and I die eventually anyway. But, <clears throat> but, but it it is a struggle. It's a struggle mentally. Sometimes it's a struggle physically. Uh, and it's something that should be acknowledged and recognized as yeah, a true something that's true to a person and something that's true for the world at large, honestly. Uh, I believe the last time I looked at it, there were still 12 countries in the world where being gay was illegal. Um, and in some of those countries, you could be put to death simply for being who you are. Um, and it, it's, it's really devastating still. Um, also, people within the LGBTQ community are being treated differently. Some people think that asexuals are still somehow sick. They have something wrong with them since they don't feel sexual attraction. Or bisexuals shouldn't be in pride parades because they can still be straight. Or, you know, other kinds of bullshit like that. And it's just so stupid the way that even the uh, community together can still be so diversive, even though it's meant to be included. Um, and so I would like to take a moment to suggest that everyone, you, you can pause this video. You can come back to it in July for all I care. Um, but pause the video, open another tab on your computer or your phone, and just Google gay historical icons. Or something along those lines. You'd be surprised how many different people pop up. You know, from uh, Marsha P. Johnson to Harvey Milk. Uh, to people who we all heard, learned about in history but didn't... We weren't, we weren't taught that they were part of the LGBT, LGBTQ plus community. Such as Leonardo da Vinci or Florence Nightingale. There's a lot of places in history where you're still not taught the true history um, of what this community struggled through. Um, very few history books talk about the AIDS epidemic throughout the 80s. And I find that very sad. Uh, sad and discouraging. So you can actually learn a, a lot just by taking 10-15 minutes out of your day to Google it. But most people don't. <laughs> Um, unless it pertains to you. So, that would be my suggestion. In 2021 Pride Month, by taking some time out of your day to acknowledge those from the past, acknowledge their memory, acknowledge their struggles, and just educate yourself a little bit about, uh, what we went through and what we're still going through, uh, just a couple months ago, my state, Arkansas, passed a horrific 
uh, law that stated that uh, transgender youth cannot undergo any hormone replacement therapy until they're 18, even if they do have their parents' consent. Um, which I talked about, I talked about this briefly with a member of the community, um, and I understand her perspective on it, uh, saying that kids don't really understand, uh, the difference between boys and girls, like they do, but, you know, not the physical, physicalities of it, or the lifelong ramifications of changing. Uh, in some cases, she was absolutely true, like she used an example of a kid that she knew wanted to be a girl just so she, he could play with a doll. Obviously, that kind of stuff, you don't need to go through the entire uh, transition for. Just give the kid a doll, let him play with it for 10 minutes, and then he'll get bored and go back to his video games, probably. Um, but some kids do know, some of them from a young age, some of them around puberty, usually. Uh, sometimes they don't do it till later in life, but if they do recognize it as a kid, that they were assigned the wrong gender at birth. It's very important that they get, if they want to, that they get the hormone replacement therapy as soon as possible. Because the younger you are, the more healthy, healthier your body will respond to it. Um, because at puberty, that's when your hormones kick in anyway, usually. That's when, uh, you know, gr girls start to grow breasts. It's when men's voice starts, starts to change, that kind of thing. And so if they can get the hormones to combat their, the ones that they were born with, the more healthy their body will respond to it. Um, so the fact that the kids in my state can't get that legally until they're 18, it honestly breaks my heart. Um, and it makes me feel even more ashamed of living in the South. There's nothing wrong with living in the South. The South is an awesome community in its own right. But when it comes to LGBTQ plus community, we're all treated like shit in a lot of the Southern states. Um, and it's something that still needs to change. It's something that deeply needs to change. So educate yourself on, you know, the laws that's in the state of your community, what you can do to combat the ones that were put in place by people who are uneducated about, uh, the LGBTQ plus community and also again just gay historical figures that have gone unrecognized in our history because and if you're someone with young kids educate them when they start learning about other historical figures in school you know take them aside a weekend or something and talk about the LGBTQ plus icons in history Say, your teachers aren't going to teach you this, but I want you to educate, be educated on this. Because I find that be very important as well. But anyway guys, we're going to get into the fun part of the video, but I did want to take that time to just express my passion for the LGBTQIA community. And that there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. I'm, a, I'm grateful for the work that has been done, for the people who have come before me in this community. Some of them sacrificing their lives for the community. Um, but the fight's still not over. And it's up to us to carry it on. So anyway. So top five. Now this is an honorary mention. You'll notice there's a few uh, bare spots in the back. You can see the poopa corn that <laughs> Nerd Crew got me a lot clearly now. Um, but I had to include her because everyone knows hot girl is my baby <laughs> but uh in the bombshell comics they turn they made it was a it was a comic series or really an art series it started out as uh that put all of the main female characters some of the male but most of the female characters in dc comics into a uh, world war ii style look and when the comics came out they made nearly every character LGBTQ+, um, which was amazing. And so they actually made Hot Girl uh, Vixen's lover, which if you watch Justice League Unlimited, you understand the irony there. So I had to include her. She's not canningly, canningly, 
uh, gay in the main series of comics or in the animated universe or anything, but she is in the Bombshell universe. So I had to include it. Hot Girl is my favorite character, and the fact that they included her in the series and made her uh, LGBTQ+, and the fact that it's Shaira. The original artwork was actually Kendra, who is another character who was also, you know, Hot Girl. Um, so the fact that they switched it to Shaira, who is my favorite, this meant a whole lot to me, and I absolutely love, love, love it that they included this, and this is one of my prize pops, honestly. It's worth about eight bucks, maybe not even that. To me, it's priceless, and I absolutely love it. It's in a hard stack because I keep all the ones in the back in a hard stack, but even if not, even if it wasn't in like a place where it could potentially fall, <laughs> I would still have this thing in a hard stack. So that's the honorary mention because I had to include it. <laughs> She's not a, a traditional main character, but she is in that series, so I had to include it. All the rest of these, either the character themselves or the actor that played them is LGBTQ. And I haven't really put a number to this yet. You know what, let's start with him. Let's start with John Constantine. So this was a free comic book day exclusive, does it say the year, 2019. Free comic book day exclusive, you got these at your comic book shops um, in 2019. So this is freaking cool. Uh, John Constantine, DC Com there's gonna be more DC comic, I'm sorry. But <laughs> DC Comics, uh, he is a demonologist, he works with the dark magic, and he's also bisexual. In fact, if you watch um, DC Legends Tomorrow, you've seen that he's gone through a few lovers. <laughs> Some people that he's actually truly been in love with, both men and women, and they do a really good job. That series does a really good job in general uh, because both um, John Constantine and uh, Sarah Lance, the White Canary, are both bisexual, and then there's Ava Sharp, who's gay, um, and there was a few other LGBTQ characters in that series as well. Still haven't watched the current season yet. I need to. Um, but that series does a really good job of, uh, showing the community, but not emphasizing the community. And I think that's something that needs to be done more often. Like, it's not like, okay, these characters are gay, that's the main storyline. And it needs to be put in as normal, just as normal as heterosexual relationships. You normalize it, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, uh, just to give it a small comparison, uh, which I understand there's a ton of differences in this scenario, I do understand that. Um, but it wasn't all that long ago that if you saw a white and a black person in the same relationship, in a relationship together, that was seen as very taboo. It was seen as very wrong, especially in other places. Now it's pretty normal. You see commercials, you see shows uh, that depict, you know, interracial couples. And it's, it's just normal that no one really thinks about it anymore. Yeah, there's a few idiots out there that still bitch about it. But for the most part, it's very, very normal now. And no one really thinks about it. And that's the way that uh, LGBTQ relationships should be seen as well. And you do see it uh, some. I've been seeing it more in commercials and series. And so that's very, very much a step in the right direction. So I love the way this character is portrayed. I absolutely love reading this character and watching this character. I was so floored when we got John Constantine. The fact that he has an actual fireball in one hand and then his cigarette lighter in another, yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty accurate depiction of John Constantine in a nutshell right there. Um, next, let's go with a childhood favorite of mine, Sailor Uranus. So Sailor Uranus, I can do praises for and rants about. Now, the reason I only chose Uranus was because I did something not too long ago. Whoa, I think it was the name challenge. And I used Sailor Neptune. Uh, if you guys know Sailor Moon, you know Uranus and Neptune are a couple. Um, so I chose to leave Neptune on the shelf since she got in the spotlight recently. So I brought got Uranus out there. They are my two favorite characters, of course. Uh, I love all of the Outer Scouts, which is everyone but the one with the pink hair. Uh, the most out of the Sailor Moon characters, but the thing with Uranus and Neptune, um, if you watch the current stuff, like Sailor Moon Crystal, Sailor Moon Eternal, 
you're going to get the version that was meant to be. Uh, you're going to get the version that was meant to, it, it was it was really meant in Japan catering towards uh, teenage girls. And if you guys hear voices upstairs, I apologize. I try to tell them to shut up when I'm filming, but it doesn't work. Okay, maybe they stop now. But anyway, but anyway, but in the cartoon version that I grew up with, they actually depicted Uranus and Neptune as cousins. Which wasn't weird at all, I say super sarcastically. They pretty much, they didn't want any kids to be exposed to homosexuality. And so they made their relationship a more familial relationship, which just made everyone creeped out. <laughs> Because they were still flirting with each other, like the, they they could change the dialogue, right? But they couldn't really change uh, the visuals that were shown in the cartoon, and so or the anime, sorry, whatever. <coughs> but it was shown on Cartoon Network, okay? But so the things they were saying and the things they were doing didn't really sync up. <laughs> kind of made it look like they were a bit southern. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway eventually things got on the right track in fact that was one reason why season five of the original anime never made it to the english dub uh one sailor uranus and neptune's relationship was harder to hide even though they weren't really hiding it in the first place um but another thing was the sailor starlights um the three characters that were introduced in the last season uh they were from another planet where they were actually female, but when they came to Earth, their bodies transformed to male, and so when they activated their powers, they went back to female. So they were pretty much gender fluid in a way. They could go from male to female. Um, this was really cool. Sailor Moon was very notorious for doing that a lot. Um, I know Zoocyte was shown as a girl in the original anime, even though he was a gay guy, but he looked more feminine, so they made him and Malachite's relationship heterosexual instead of a gay relationship. Uh, Fish Eye, I'm still not really sure what was up. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't really looked into it. I, I know he's in, uh, or they're in, uh, Sailor Moon Eternal. I need to get my gear together and watch that. Um, because I know it, he was depicted as a girl in the original anime, but there was still an episode that showed his bare chest. So I'm not really sure if the original writer meant for him to be portrayed as a guy or them. Maybe they were meant to be non-binary or a trans girl. I'm not really sure. So I need to look into that. But again, this was a lot of people's first introduction uh, especially, you know, gay women. This was a lot of our first introduction to gay characters was Uranus and Neptune, even though it was portrayed very strangely. If we ha most of us had access to the internet still around, or if you watched it when I did, uh, you had access to the internet either at that time or a little older. I, I watched this as a little kid, but I didn't get the internet in my home until I was like, I don't know, middle schoolish. Um, so I was finally able to Google it and learn a little bit more about it. Um, so always going to have a special place in my heart. Uh, for sure. This entire show will always have a special place in my heart. Um, next let's go, let's go with the two actors next. Let's go Vanya. Now Vanya in Umbrella Academy, I have not seen season two yet. I've only seen season one. So I don't know. Last I've heard she was still straight in the show, but she's played by Elliot Page. Elliot very recently came out as transgender, um, which I know it kind of combats my point a little bit at the beginning when I said that, you know, the younger you are, the better off it is. You can still transition very healthily as an adult, um, but it's still the younger you are, the better it is for you. You can still trans uh, transition from the gender you were born with to the gender that you truly are at any point in your life. Um, it doesn't really have a time limit on it at all. There are people who are, you know, very elderly who are transitioning. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but still, you know, you are traditionally 
the better off for you, both physically and mentally. But uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to figure things out, and that's perfectly fine. There are some, again, there are people who are uh, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, who are realizing for the first time in their life that they're LGBTQ plus of some sort. <laughs> and that is perfectly fine. All of us do it at our own stages. Some of us do it very young. I kind of got hit in the head with it a little bit while well, I discovered it over time and then I realized it was okay just by reading that. That's another story altogether that I've said before. Maybe I'll make a, just a small, just a dedicated video where I just talk about that. Um, but the fact that he was brave enough to come out and be his own person is just frankly very amazing. And uh, there's other people, like I know, uh, was it Demi Lovato? Yes, I think it was Demi Lovato, very recently came out as non-binary. And these are people who deserve to be celebrated. Even Caitlyn Jenner, I know Caitlyn Jenner has her problems. <laughs> Love her or hate her. But, you know, she, she was really the first person, she, she obviously wasn't the first famous person, first transgender person, but she was the first transgender person who everyone knew of, kind of. Not very many people have heard of Marsha P. Johnson again because our history doesn't teach it. But everyone knew Bruce Jenner from the Olympics and from, you know, uh, the Kardashians and stuff like that. And so the fact that she came out publicly as Caitlyn, suddenly everyone was aware of a transgender person. And that was amazing. Even though she's not probably not the best person to depict <laughs> LGBTQ community. Um, she was there, she did put the idea of transgenders being more than just a nameless person to a lot of people. Most people do well, I won't say most, but a lot of people don't know of a transgender person in their life, or they know of one, you know, off the top of their head. Now they do. And so Elliot Page is an another one. Um... So I'm very happy for him that he's living the life that he deserves to be. And so this is for Elliot Page. Uh, and I don't believe that there are any transgender characters made into Funko Pops yet. I know there's not uh, Laverne, what, what was her name? Sophie something, Sophia something. Uh, Laverne Cox's character in Orange and the New Black. They never made her. And there are others like uh, the show Pose. I know had a few... I haven't watched it yet, but I know there's a lot of transgender characters in that one. Um, the closest I think Funko has gotten is Stevani, which is uh, Steven Universe and Connie, I think is her name, mixed together from the Steven Universe storyline. Uh, I had that pop, but I actually finally sold it because um, it was the only uh, non-gender normative pop that they've made so far that I believe. If, if if people know of another one, let me know, but I believe they haven't yet, so it'll be really cool if Funko eventually makes a trans or a genderqueer character of one day. Number two. So, this is Billy the Blue Ranger, and I chose the one without his helmet specifically because this is the one that's supposed to look like David Yost. David Yost was... You know, Billy was always my favorite Power Ranger because he was the nerdy one. <laughs> I like the nerdy one. He always had the answers for everything for his brain, not necessarily his brawn. But he could still hold his own in, in a fight, even though none of them really fought in that show. <laughs> but but um, at, later in life, I learned that David Yost was gay. And the fact that one of my favorite superheroes from my childhood identified as gay almost made me validate myself more um because again he was a hero that i looked up to um and i love this show i still love power rangers um the entire series of power rangers there's still a few seasons i haven't watched yet um but again the fact that and, and, and the fact that he's told his story, like, Billy was the one out of the original five Rangers, he was the one who lasted on the show the longest. He was there 
uh, throughout the Zeo Rangers, and I can't remember, was he in Turbo? I can't remember. But he find, if you watch the last episode where they explain Billy's back, or like why Billy left, David Yelst isn't in it. It's not his voice. It's someone completely different. Because he walked off the set. And he said it before. He said he was called the F word one too many times. He was bullied so much on the set that he finally just walked off. But people still acknowledge him, his fellow cast members still acknowledge him. I know he has a good relationship with uh, Amy Jo Johnson. They still do a lot of stuff together, the Pink Ranger. Um, so the fact that the, the crew dishonored him, but his fans still don't. The Power Ranger community is vast and strong. There are so many uh, Power Ranger actors out there who are like, this is the best fan base ever. Like, even though they've gone on to do different stuff, like, the Power Ranger fan base is the strongest. <laughs> I've heard so many people being interviewed say that. Um, and so, again, just the fact that his fans didn't care whether he was gay or not, just the fact that he was a hero that they grew up with. And again, it just really helped validate my feelings as a kid and made me feel almost more protected if that makes any sense whatsoever so we'll always always be grateful uh for david for show telling his story and for being part of my childhood so number one of course i'm a dc fan so there's only really one character that could be number one and that is batwoman now i've told this story before but i'm gonna tell it again just a brief history on Batwoman's origin. So, Batwoman came about during the age of the Comic Code Authority. The Comic Code Authority was a guideline of rules that every comic book had to had to abide by, because there were a lot of people, especially parents and political leaders, that were saying that comic books were too violent and they're going to leave our kids astray they're going to make them become criminals think about all the shit you hear about violent video games and put it to towards um comic books and so another thing on the comic code authority said that you couldn't have any depiction of gay characters now there were a few comic books that were known to gang around this like wonder woman they never really specifically mentioned that mindy mara was gay or mindy mara's brother was gay um but they told it in every way they could, uh, other than blank, than point blank. But with the Batman comics, I, I don't believe this was how it was in, intended to be, but a lot of people uh, read the old Batman comics, the old Detective comics, and saw Batman and Robin together. They kind of headcanoned them as a couple, even though they were meant to be more like a father-son kind of thing, or at least a best friend kind of thing, at the very least. Um, but you know, I remember there was one panel that was shown once with the two of them in bed together for some reason, probably because that was just better for the story, they didn't have to show it, they had to take up extra panels of them meeting in the morning or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was kind of weird, but the gays reading the comics loved it. I mean, it was as close to the depiction as in for LGBTQ as anyone got back then. You know, Batman was in 1939, so this was in the 40s, 50s, something like that, probably. So yeah, it was something way before its time, but it even wasn't really meant to. And so a lot of people were making exceptions about it. And so to stick with the Comic Code Authority, they created Kathy and Betty Kane, the very first Batwoman and Batgirl. And for everyone who's pausing the video to <laughs> leave the comic, no, Barbara Gordon was the first Batgirl. Google it. I'm right. But anyway, Barbara Gordon didn't come till later. But anyway, it was Betty Kane first. But, um, I think by like a year or so. But anyway, uh, Batgirl was meant to be Robin's love interest. Batwoman was meant to be Batman. And literally all they did was dress up in Bat costumes, 
I think Batgirl actually had a literal skirt. Batwoman had a purse. It was really weird, and literally all they did was flirt with Batman. If you've watched uh, the Batman Brave and the Bold uh, story, like the cartoon, um, they actually that was a cartoon that came out. I think I was in high school, but they depicted all the characters like they were in the '80s. So Catwoman had her dress, um, the old Animal Man, stuff like that, um, and so they also brought back the original Batwoman. And all she did was flirt with Batman. <laughs> and that's pretty much what she did in the comics as well. That was all she was there for. Was simply to prove heterosexual dominance. That was what she was originally created for. Years later, Comic Code Authority finally gets lost. No one has to abide by that shit anymore. It's discontinued. You don't have to have that stupid little stamp on all the comic books anymore. And so, DC reissued Batwoman. Batwoman didn't last long. The original one did not last long because no one cared about her. Literally. All she did was flirt with Batman. She wasn't part of the story. So, she didn't last long in the comics. But they resurrected the character and made her a military member. And a gay. <laughs> and a lesbian. In fact, if you read the uh, Batwoman 52, New 52 comic books, uh, they always start out by kind of introducing the new Kate Kane uh, as being a victim of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. You know, because it was started back when that law was still in effect as well. And then uh, also that she was a proud lesbian. And so this was a character that was, that existed purely again just to take the light away from any perceived LGBTQ acknowledgement and just reestablish that there was only heterosexual was the only uh, form of acceptance when it came to sexuality and they reissued resurrected the character from the ashes and made her the out and proud uh, biggest LGBTQ character in all of DC Comics. In fact, if you look at the Pride book that DC issued for Pride Month, Batwoman is front and center, and that's the reason why. Uh, they kind of learned from the mistakes of the past and made up for it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to say that Batwoman's had the best uh, of luck in the comics. There's a few things that's been done with her that I strongly disapprove of, but the fact that she, that they recreated her to make her the forefront of the LGBT LGBTQ community within the DC universe that was amazing it was absolutely amazing and there are other you know LGBTQ plus characters in the comic books but this one will always reign number one to me simply because of that background that she was created to ignore the community but then turned out to represent the community so, I will always, always love this character, no matter what. Um, so that is really my top six characters, pops, that mean a lot to me, more or less because they are also a part of the LGBTQ community. So, I'm very uh, curious how you guys like this video. Um, the names that I mentioned in the first half, first part of this video, did you guys recognize any of them? If not, you probably need to go Google. <laughs> Just saying. Um, because again, there's a lot of things that we can learn from our history that aren't being bothered to be taught in our histories. And I think that's a real, I think it's a real problem, personally. Um, so I strongly urge everyone, whether you're in the community or not, because there's a lot of people still in the community that's never really bothered to research, um, do it again, take a few minutes out of your day just to Google, <laughs> just to learn a little bit about those who've come before us and fought 
so damn hard just for the rights to exist. Um, yeah, it it's something that desperately needs to be done in schools and households, but it is very often not. So that's my personal take on it. I'm not trying to preach to anyone, but I guess I kind of did. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys thought of this video. Uh, and remember, guys, no matter what you identify as, you can be yourself all year long. And if people don't like it, then there you don't deserve to be in your life. Period. And thank God for the online community because, and I don't mean just the Funko community, but online community. Because I know when I was in high school, I wasn't out to anyone. My online friends knew of my presence. They did not know my name. <laughs> I went by another name, uh, my screen name at the time. But they were a group of people that I could talk to about the struggles of being in the closet and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of danger when it comes to online communities still. I understand that, uh, especially if you're doing, if you're of underage. I absolutely understand that, but at the same time, it was a lifeline for me. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge them really quickly because if it wasn't for them, I probably would have a very different mindset than I do right now. So, I just wanted to acknowledge that really quick. Again, guys, let me know what your video what you thought of this video. What's your favorite pop that represents the LGBTQ plus community? Recognize that I didn't put any of my pride pops up here because so far, ex well, except maybe SpongeBob. Isn't SpongeBob canonically gay now? I don't know, but <laughs> something like that. So far, they haven't done that many gay characters. So I talked, I was talking to the McDorks about this. Funko, get on it. There's a lot of LGBTQ plus characters to choose from. Instead of making Batman the Pride Pot, make Batwoman. Make a lot more sense. But anyway, thank you all for watching this video. Let me know what you thought. And remember, guys, like always, it's a community, not a competition. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.